All right, so Robert and I are here with Alex Metz. He's going to be demoing Summoner Wars to us here. Now, I've played a few times before. This is Robert's first time, so we got to kind of see how that dynamic works, see what kind of questions you might have as we go. All right. But Alex, feel free to uh, go ahead and uh, kick us off here. So Summoner Wars, it's a tactical combat card game. Uh, the main goal of the game is each faction as well as summoner. It's kind of like you're king in chess. You win the game by killing your opponent's summoner. Okay. The cards in your deck are broken up into either units or events. Because I killed a guy there. If you look at a unit card, there are going to be a couple key components on it. I just this number in the top the left, that's their I, I attack value. That's how many dice they're going to roll when they make an attack. Okay. The number of little dots next to it, that's their health. That's how many wounds they can take before they die. Uh, under it, you have their summoning cost or how much magic you're going to have to pay to bring a new one out into the field. And then you're going to have either a sword or a bow icon indicating if they're a melee or ranged unit. Awesome. Melee units can attack any space that's orthogonally adjacent, so diagonals don't count in this game. Right. Uh, ranged units can attack up to three clear straight line spaces away. Okay. So you're going to have two main classes of units in your deck. You have common units and champion units. Now on the field right now you have a lot of common units. Those are sort of your basic generic grunts. You got a handful more deceivers in your deck, more controllers, etc. Each deck also has three unique champions. Okay. They're going to be more powerful. They're going to be more costly. Here's one of the ones of the cloaks your opponent. Uh, so you notice he has a significantly higher cost to summon onto the field. He has more health as well and more attack to make up for it. And their abilities will often be more powerful. Each class of unit has an interesting ability that comes with it too. Nice. Yeah, interesting. We also right. have what are called event cards. Uh, they're sort of spells and whatnot. Um, some of them might allow you to catch up if your opponent is winning the game. For instance, this one, if your opponent has more units on the field than you do, you can take cards from their magic pile and put them in your own. Magic is sort of the commodity used to summon more units and bring them onto the field. Okay. Uh, some of them might actually force you to spend magic in order to get beneficial effects. This one's to kill off a unit. There are also walls. Walls are a special type of event card, and they have a lot of the same attributes of units. Every deck has three walls, including when you start on the field. Walls are important not only for defensive formations, but whenever you bring new units onto the field, they have to be adjacent to a wall you control. Okay. You can play a wall anywhere on your half of the board. They have nine hit points the same way a unit has health. Sure. Now, see, each faction has a unique starting setup on this reference card, and if you flip it over, it comes up with a basic turn order. The guy had a little Mario so During a basic turn, you're going to start off by drawing up until you have a five card hand. Then you have the opportunity to summon more units onto the field. Then you can play event cards from your hand. After that is movement. You can move up to three units during your turn, up to two spaces each. Okay. And the two spaces don't have to be in a straight line. Once again, diagonals don't count. But okay. Then you can attack with up to three units. They don't have to be the same three in movement. Okay. Cool. And then after that, you can build magic. That's dropping cards from your hand into your magic pool. Okay. So the two main ways to gain magic are from dropping from your hand or destroying enemy units. Right. During combat, you're going to roll a number of dice equal to your attack value with the unit you're attacking with. A three or higher counts as a hit. Okay. When you destroy a unit, you flip it over, it goes face down in your magic. It doesn't matter what it is, any card in there counts as one point of magic. Okay. So and that same magic is what I'm going to use to try to summon things out on the Yes. Field. All right? So really, I can't summon anything on the first turn? Right. Well, there... some, some yeah. factions will actually have zero lost. cost units. Okay. Like these guys have thieves that don't cost anything to bring up. But yeah. in, general, <laughs> in general, you're not really going to be able to bring up much, if anything, at all. Okay. Time. Alrighty. So if you guys want to get started, uh, the way it begins, each player rolls a die. Whoever gets the higher number chooses who goes first. Now, it's not... Oh. Oh. It's not always advantageous because on the first turn, if you're going first, you only get a half turn. Just so it's not quite as imbalanced. You may go first? I want Steven to go first. Right, I'll I want go a full first. turn. So I'll go first. <laughs> he's only going to get to, he doesn't get to draw, he doesn't get to summon or play event cards. He can move up to two units and okay. then he still gets his three attacks if he wants. Okay. Alright, so let's see. We've got. Um, Oh, the scrapper is nice. Gunner doing a move. Yeah, and, and on the summoner, what is this little uh, lightning bolt? Which oh, that just mean? to put something there instead of a summoning cost. He comes on the field, okay. so 
it doesn't really make much logic okay. in terms of assembly cost. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do. I'm using the back of your opponent's side of the battlefield base to wall and control or destroy your opponent's turn. Choose one. Ah, great. And you actually have an event card in your deck that gives your thieves more moves during the turn that you play. It. Nice. All right, so I get I can move three units up to two spaces each, right? Now, on the first turn, if you're going first, you only get to move up to two units. Okay. You can still make your three attacks if you have three attacks you want to make. Cool. All right, so one move here, two spaces there, and we're going to move the thief. We're going to try to uh, get, get that thief down towards the back row there. All right, so those are my two moves. Then I can make an attack. The only attack I want to make is I have a ranged with a uh, attack value of one here, and you're within three straight line. That's right. So I'm gonna roll one die, and on a three or higher, I'm gonna ace your deceiver. Oh! <laughs> so I get that into my magic pool, and uh, that's it. Okay. So I draw how many again? Uh, up to five. Up to five. five. And what is the? Does the up to imply anything? Oh no. So you. you Draw until you have five cards okay. at the beginning of your turn, so if that was clear. And that happens every time. You draw back yes. up to five every okay. time. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> what do we got here? And how do uh, bringing walls out work? Let's just play like a full that disclosure here. <laughs> During your event phase, you can put a wall anywhere, any open space on your half of the field. Okay. So because it's during your event phase, which is yeah. after your summoning phase, you can't put a wall and then instantly bring a new unit onto You have to wait until the turn after you play okay. that wall before you but it doesn't. Summon. Does it cost anything? Or? Nope. Walls are free to play. Awesome. Hold on. Let's think about this. Uh, there are kind of two main schools of thought in terms of walls, depending on who you're playing with and what your style is. Some people like to play them back to kind of make defensive walls around their summoner. Other people like to push them up to the front so they can summon right here and move deeper into enemy territory right away. Yeah, totally. If I want to. Um, no, because that actually probably helps you. Okay, so uh, I've got nothing to summon. So I can play event cards and that includes walls, you said? So I'm going to drop that right there. What? And let's see... Then, now, can you play any number of event cards you want? Yes, you have no limit. As long as you got them in your hand, you can play them if you want to. Let's see what happens if we run out of cards. Okay, and then I'm going to play this uh, Mimic card. Now, he hasn't drawn it. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, so that doesn't do a damn Great card, but not be the right time to <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Forgot about that. Okay, so I'm done all that, and I'm going to move, and I can move three different characters, two spaces. That's correct. Alrighty. So, let's see. You got a lot of ranged over there. That's it. Actually, I'll do that. Alright. Then what is it? Attacks? Attacks. I'm not in range of anything. And so build magic. Let's see. I definitely want to try that out. Uh, now, in terms of building magic, it's pretty safe to toss a few commons down. Okay. Uh, unless you have event cards, you really don't think you're going to be that useful, or you just really need more magic. Okay. It's not necessarily the best idea to. And I'm going to drop three, just see what happens. <laughs> Alright, drop a three? Uh-huh. Alright, and then is it goes, it goes to me? It goes to your turn. So I get to draw, finally. <laughs> finally. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see if these... How'd you like that wall I put down? Nice wall. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, nice. Okay. He's, he's blocked me effectively. What? This guy's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so now I can summon. looking at your summoner? Yeah. I am going to summon. That's awesome. Thief for free. You can do that on my wall? No, you gotta do that. Just go on Oh, my bad. Yeah, I thought that was saying. my wall. No, no. <laughs> Thief there. And that's all that I will do. And then we go to playing event cards. Alright, I'm going to play Raid. Uh oh, what's that do? Choose a thief that you control. That one. <laughs> Moving this chosen thief during uh, this turn, I can move it up to three additional spaces. Say what? And so then what happens to this guy? So you can leave it out onto the side of the board if you want to keep remembering it. Otherwise, you just put it in your discard pile. Okay. I'll remember that. 
And okay, that's it for my events. Then I'll go to movement. That's right. I'll go. Let's go. One, two, one, two, three. So each faction sort of has its own personality and play style. Okay. Uh, the cloaks, they do a lot of things moving their own units a lot. You notice he can move his speed stuff a lot. His gunners, they have what's called greater sneak. If they're the only unit you move on your turn, you can move one up to three additional spaces. Oh, snap. Uh, the scrappers, if they wound a unit and not, don't kill it, one of their other ones can just be placed directly adjacent to whatever they're attacking, get an extra attack in on it. Cool. Your faction, on the other hand, they're more about screwing with their opponent. They can move the units around on the field, change the order of the decks, take cards from their hands. Controlly. Like it. And we will do a final move. What you got? What you got? One, two. How about the? All right, so then we will do some attacks. Um, my thief uh, is just over there waiting to hopefully steal something. My gunner here is actually going to swing at that wall. Oh, no. I'm going to use this power. So we're going to try to get a damage on there. Yay! Aha! And then Scrapper can't. Uh, all the attacks are done there. And so we they shall go to one. the build magic phase. I thought it was very cool. It's a hard one. Um, <laughs> I want magic, but I don't want to build it. It's because I cheated. Uh, I don't think you'd be able to get out as many guys as you had if you did. It's sad to see it go. And so whenever it says within X number of spaces, that doesn't that never counts to Agnes. Correct. All right. All right, that's me. Okay. They don't have to be in a straight line unless it says so. Okay. And I drop to five. I'm yes. One, two, three, four. Let's see what we got here. Oh man, that looks like fun. Ah, I can't afford oh, it. Oh sweet, I was going from there anyways. Thanks. Look at you that. Really fight five. Him and him. What? That was great. You could have just walked over to you. Hey, man. Okay. Good man. That's so, how you should have done that. No. Okay, then I can't so move I'm going to spend two of my magic, both. and I put it in a discard. Does it have to be face um, up or anything? Or? Discard, discard is generally face up. Okay. Yes, but your magic pile is considered private knowledge, but discard pile is public knowledge. The main thing of that is that if you're dropping cards from your hand, your opponent doesn't get to know what cards are until you spend them. Cool. All right. Um, okay. Spin two for what? So I'll put that there. A breaker. That's right. Ah! Okay, so let's see. Wow. Okay, so I'm gonna go one, two, one, and then. Um, I don't know, I think I lose when I get to the end of my deck. When I can't draw anymore, do I lose? You, you know, Jason lose. is only. You don't have any more cards. Left, down. right, up, down. Oh, is it really? Yes. Sure. So if you're trying to trap Almost. the scrapper, you need to move one more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and try that. Okay. Um, all right. So I think I will... So those two, and I'll move that up. Okay. okay. That's it. So I'm going to steal some of your dice. So I can yeah, there are <laughs> dice. <laughs> uh, so first off, I'm going to have this deceiver do an attack on the thief. There's no way you're going to hit it. Oh, I want to, though. There's no way. I need this. Oh, baby. Thank you, sir. Then I'm gonna have this controller attack that guy. Ones. Ones. Got him. Oh wait, Scrapper's got two. Boom. Oh snap. Oh snap. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to have this. Okay, wait. Uh, after attacking this controller, you may choose a unit that is within two spaces of the controller. Move the chosen unit up to one space. A controller cannot be uh, moved using te telekinetic blast. Uh, okay, so I'm going to move him. Back one. Just for fun. Ah! And uh, let's see. Don't you, don't you try to ace my thief over there? Well, I don't. <laughs> let's see. At the end of your attack base, when you choose you. See, I can use his special ability to take care of the thief Whoa. without attacking it. Whoa! So I'm going to use next level. this guy to attack your wall. Two dice. My wall? Oh, two hits. And then at the end of my attack phase, uh, you may choose a unit within three 
uh, clear straight line spaces of this guy, spend a number of magic points equal to the chosen unit, summon cost to discard that unit. So, boop, and he's gone. Yeah, because summon cost zero, zero cost. Zero cost. Oh, you can man, just ace him for you. He's right there. <laughs> <laughs> and he can I think he's discarded. Yeah. So he goes over here. And that's a me. All right, do uh, you want to build magic at all? You don't have oh, any cards. Huh? I do. Um, let me see if I can do any of this. I forgot all about it. Forgot all about it. You got two magic over there. That's fine. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm actually gonna drop three. Just for fun. Drop three. Drop a three. Ooh. Okay. So it comes to me. I get to draw my three. Okay. I think it's dead. It's dead. Then I will go to my summon phase. Where I will um, pay one. That's right, I discarded a magic dream. <gasps> Summon a scrapper. You can't do that. <laughs> and uh, let's see if I have a, a guy with a ranged attack. Can he shoot beyond something that's behind him? No. Okay. You can only attack the nearest unoccupied space. Okay. It was all a trap, Robert. I knew it. Uh, I've been had again. So I can play event cards. I don't think I and want to. Hypothetically, let's say I had these two guys lined up like this. Can he shoot beyond him? No. Okay. So he'll block line the side, essentially. Yeah. Okay. All right, so then we'll go to uh, movement, and you will see that the trap has been set. My gunner will be taking a shot at your precious what, summoner. What trap? <laughs> I, I know you're going to roll a one, so it's no big deal. Um, <laughs> we will smoke that there, and one, the two. We're going for the gold back here. Uh, so that's one movement, two movement, and three movements there. How exciting. Okay. So now we go to the attack phase. I'm going to try to hit one on the uh, summoner there. Miss! Oh. Take your one damage, summoner. It's probably not going to happen. Because I cheated. Oop, that's another three. We will do blocks on the breaker here. Hope you miss. No misses there, sucker. And then scrapper on the control. I hope you also miss. <laughs> miss again. Ah. Yes. Ah. Ah. <laughs> All right, and then I can build magic. Oh, sure. She'll play this. Um, let's do. That guy. I do you want at least one down. Gotta be fine there. Okay. So back to you. All right, drawn up to five. All right, time to read the cards. Huh? <laughs> I may choose a cloak <laughs> unit on the battlefield. During this turn, box he has the same name and abilities. Nice. That looks like a lot of fun. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That looks like too much fun. I've got to bring this out. What? <laughs> this is crazy. All right, so I've got to Let's see. One, two, three, four, five magic. Open five. That's right. Uh, a champion, me thinks. And uh, Sorgwen. Ah, she's coming out. You may choose a common unit you control that is within three spaces of her. You may immediately attack with the chosen unit, even if it already attacked. I know, right? Isn't that sick? Okay, here we go. She's got three. I know. It's crazy. Uh oh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, this guy's going to take this. So, I'm going to move this. Eh, this is not, yeah, well, never mind. It doesn't have to be a three straight line. So, let's stay there. We're going to go one, this two. This guy's going to attack this guy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> He's dead. And. That's it. Okay, you're going to be counting on some successful hits here. Um, we'll have this controller attack your scallywag there. <laughs> Got him! Ah. My plan, she can at least work for a turn. Uh, this controller will attack that okay. guy. Your turn, go. Oh, and what up on your plan now? And then I'll have this guy attack you. Guys. What? Yes. What? Yes. Outrageous. Okay, uh, and then at the end of my attack fades, I'm going to have this guy attack that guy again. 
Got him. The seminary again? Yeah. Or no, this guy? This guy just won. Yeah, I don't have any uh, guys. Guys. Yeah, so. <laughs> And then I'm going to use this guy's magic to discard him. Ah. And that's a me. Oh, that's wait. Building magic. Hold on. So we just got done here effect. with the, uh, the quick okay. demo here at Seminole Wars. We didn't go to completion, although we actually wanted to, um, because it is kind of addicting. Yeah, it's like great. It. Um, it's got great flow. Great flow. Um, so what, what was your opinion, Robert, having uh, played now for the first time? It, it's super interesting. Uh, the things that stick out in my mind uh, from playing this are uh, what I would think uh, from the beginner's point of view anyway, are the two schools of thought between uh, building up a lot of magic uh, during your sixth step of build magic, and then as a result of that, compromising how many cards you can draw over the length of the game. Because if the game's pretty long, you're doing all this magic build, but you're not going to have many cards to last you that game. Otherwise, you can try to solely rely on killing your opponent's stuff to get your magic built up. But aside from that, there's all kinds of cool effects going on here. A lot of interesting synergy. The balance is tip top. Uh, and at the same time, this uh, Goldoon guy, he is incredible. I love him. Uh, I, I think I, I really like this faction. I, I enjoyed my summoner. Got to use his ability twice. Uh, I couldn't be more satisfied with the, uh, the flavor and mechanics of my uh, faction. So I'm, I'm giving this uh, two very enthusiastic thumbs up. Nice, great. Um, so what what would you say as far as uh, how how much of a risk is there to just get a bad matchup? Is there some factions that can just suffer and struggle against others? I noticed um, I noticed that in the tournament you bring four faction decks and play four different factions. So that can definitely help in that area. But is there anything that you notice about? Uh, there are a few matchups in which one side just kind of naturally has an advantage, but overall the game's really balanced. There's been a lot of effort into putting through, making sure no one faction is too powerful compared to others. Um, is there any errata or anything uh, that has, any of this that has changed or that has uh, been tweaked given that it's been released to the public and anything that's, you know, been a bit too strong or too weak? As far as I know, there's only been one change made to the game, and that was within the first year, just a strategy that didn't occur to people. It came up, we made the change been fully resolved. And that was that, huh? <laughs> awesome. Easy peasy. Awesome. Well, um, I think, do you have any other questions? I don't. Oh, well, one quick one before I, I, I leave here. Sure. Uh, what happens when you kill a wall? Do you, does that become uh, magic? It does goes it? into magic, sure. And there's some factions where one of the main ways they win is by destroying their opponent's there's walls there. and preventing them from just summoning any more units. Bro, love that. Leave us the dwarves. In yes. <laughs> this is great. I, I love know. this game. Cool. All right, man. Well, <laughs> thanks so much. Thanks 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 so much. Thanks so much. And uh, we will uh, take our better hours for talking.